Before we dive into this one, there's a couple of things just to check. So if you come up to plugins and search for editor and make sure your editor scripting utilities are enabled. Uh, they should be on by default, but if they're not, and then uh, just check that and restart. So the nodes associated to the editor utility widget are quite comprehensive. We are only going to touch on a few, but to access all of them, if you come to editor scripting, then you can see there's a whole host there to explore and uh, appreciate what you can do. So you can work with populating data tables, you can do all sorts of things. Um, so it's a very, very powerful way of adding some functionality and tools. Editor utility widgets are a way of adding functionality in Editor. So if you've watched my videos for a while, you would have seen that I sometimes have a ticker up here. So that is actually an Editor utility widget. But then I've also created this basic spring clean and organize widget, which I've just docked here. Editor utilities. Then you have editor utility widgets there. So they're different to user interface widgets. They have a specific way of being wrapped so that you can right click them and then run editor utility widget in the editor. So both of those are running. That's just a ticker tape purely to save me saying like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. But while you're there, please do. And this one I have just created and let me explain what it does. So if you are working in your project and say, for example, you've been adding a few lights of different kinds You know, very quickly, your world outliner can get a little bit busy. And you might just want to do a little bit of a spring clean on it. So I'll do that. And then you know what it's like. You keep adding things. Let's add post process volume or two or three. So my world outliner here is getting a little bit unruly, but now when I click spring clean and organize, you'll see that any lights have gone into a folder with light, any post process volumes have gone into their own folder. And then all those static mesh have also gone into their own folder. So wizardry, how do we do that? So coming to our Organize widget blueprint. So the editor utility widget blueprint is the same as the widget blueprint. So you have your designer where you will have your hierarchy here in terms of we have a vertical box with two buttons and then you have your graph for your accompanying code. So if we come back to here now, I've only docked this here and I've covered it up. So I do have another button here, but I'm going to give you one example at a time. Now, one thing you'll know is that it's got a little triangle there where you can reveal the tab and then dock it like any other window in Unreal Engine. So if it's standing alone and doesn't, it has a tab on its own, you can actually collapse it like that. That's kind of what I've done here. So if I click on that triangle, it will give me the ticker back and I can collapse it. So it just saves you some space as well. I built this in Unreal Engine 4.26 and then I've just ported it across. And it's actually given me a warning on this node, even though it still works. It does say that it's been depreciated, but I don't think it fully has yet. So I've used the get selected level actors, which is another demo I'll give you shortly and get all level actors. So they are still working for now. I don't know if these have been missed off because they're quite important to be able to do stuff in editor um, and will be added again later. There's no, I've not looked in the documentation as yet to know what they've been replaced with. So if you know that, do let me know. 
Anyway, the button I clicked, we got all level actors. So they can be actors of any type. They get put into an array of actors. So they can be static mesh actors or post process volume actors because they are all actors and share the parent class of actor. And then I am using some of the filtering nodes to put them in their own folders. So for example, on the first row, we have a subset using filter by ID name. And I've just put light in because all the light actors have the word light in their name. So I'm filtering by name here and, and filtering by a substring of their name, creating an array out of that filter of all the actual arrays. And then on a for each loop, I'm putting them into a folder, which is just called light. So the variable is called light, but the actual folder is called light as well. And then by extension, there's another filter here called filter by class. So I've just got static mesh actor selected here. So all those mesh, the columns, the cylinders, the spheres, they all got put into their own folder, static mesh. I then also did post process volume as another object class. I've got one here for skeletal mesh, but there were no skeletal mesh in my world. And I've also got another one here for Niagara actors, should I have any particle effects in the, in the scene. So, you know, this is just a starter. You can kind of come in here and use some of the other ways of filtering to help organize your own system. So it kind of depends on your project, depends on your workflow. Um, but this video is just more really to show you that by employing the power of editor utility widgets, you can create your own functionality. So another little utility widget, which is part of the same one actually, is the functionality to random Z rotate on selected. So if I say create three of these cubes and then click random Z, I'm now affecting all three of those on their own pivot points. So, you know, very quickly, you can build all sorts of tools to help with your level design or any other efficiencies or time savings that you can create tools for. So this widget is available as a free download. The U asset is in the description. So please do download it. Now there's no undo built into this. So, you know, when you do something, it will You'll see the undo didn't undo the rotation. Ignored all of those because I don't have any buffer built into this as yet. So I'll look into how to do that and create another video for editor utility widget undo buffer. So coming back into our utility widget, on that rotation, I'm now using the get selected level actors. So whereas before we were accessing all the actors in the level, it's now the ones that I have shift selected and uh, multi selected. And then from that, it's passing that through and just doing a set actor rotation using a random floating range. So super simple example. Live long and prosper.